Hello everyone and welcome, I'm doing a lot of movement. Welcome back uh, to a Better Me YouTube channel. So I know it's been a while since I've recorded or it's been a little minute and that's just because of life. Life has been really busy, but good. Uh, so yeah. So one of the things that my husband and I, okay, if you just heard a noise, it was a little air freshener letting out some scent in the house. Anyways, so one of the things that my husband and I do is we uh, do campus ministry. And so what that is, is basically God's work, but on a college campus setting or in a college campus setting. So we lead students to Christ. We do a lot of discipleship and mentorship, which is that intimate one-on-one -on -one, uh, kind of uh, setting with individuals that just gave their life to Christ or desire to grow more in Christ. Uh, also, we just do a lot. <laughs> do a lot of traveling with ministry. So one of the things that we do is travel to different college campuses and we help set up fellowships there. And we're a part of this amazing ministry and organization called Bethel Campus Fellowship. And so we basically oversee North Carolina and we kind of oversee all of the operation that takes place in North Carolina. So we juggle a lot, but we really enjoy what we do and we enjoy doing it together. So one of the things that I wanted to talk about today, just kind of some encouragement. I know we're approaching graduation for a lot of college students and I just wanted to encourage people. I know that this is probably a really stressful time as people are probably putting in grad school applications or trying to apply for jobs. Um, some people, this may be a discouraging time if they're not hearing back from jobs or if they just don't know what they want to do in life, especially, <clears throat> quite a lot of noise out there. I started to close the window. I know, I just know, I just know like. And it's okay. We have the window open. So somebody was walking by with the cart. It's it okay though. Hard. It's okay. So. Thanks, babe. But anyways, it's a really stressful time, especially when you have parents and family members who are probably adding to the stress as far as their expectations from you and, you know, what are you doing with your life kind of thing. Uh, it, yeah, it could just be a lot. So I just wanted to encourage you. When I graduated with my bachelor's, I went on, I immediately went into grad school and my grad program was um, 10 months. So I started, I graduated in May, started my grad program in July and I finished the next May. And I remember upon graduating or getting ready to graduate with my master's, I had this whole idea and plan set in my mind of, you know, getting this big time job and just what life after graduation was gonna look like. And it wasn't that. <laughs> And not in a bad way, uh, you know, I started applying for jobs and I didn't really, I didn't hear back from a lot of places. And so I remember really just praying and asking the Lord to lead me. And I remember in my quiet time, the Lord saying, or I was like, oh, I'm going to get a big time job. Like I was just, you know, imagining just, you know, kind of away in my head of what life after graduation was going to be like. And I remember hearing the Holy Spirit say, no full-time work. And I was like, well, that ain't God. That must be the devil trying to discourage me. You know, that can't be God. And when I sat there for a minute, I heard him say, no full-time work. I need you to learn how to be a wife. And for those that don't know, around that time, I, you know, was getting married. So uh, I was about to graduate from being a student to being a wife and, you know, entering into the workforce full time. So, you know, when I heard the Lord say, I want you to learn how to be a wife, I was like, okay, I hear you, but I'm going to still apply to jobs. I'm going to still apply to these full-time jobs because I had an expectation for myself. I, you know, I graduated both with my bachelor's and master's with honors. And then I graduated from an Ivy League um, college with my master's. So I was like, I had an expectation of myself and then my family had this expectation of 
you know, what life after school should look like for me, that I was going to get this big time job because, you know, places of employment would see where I graduated from. So yeah, I just kind of had this standard or this expectation in my mind. And so I continued to apply for schools. I graduated, still hadn't heard anything back. I moved back to the South because I was in school um, in New York. And I moved back to the South and um, started planning for our wedding celebration that summer. And even that summer, I hadn't found a job. So I went back to Chick-fil-A because that's where I worked undergrad. And I just picked up like a few shifts that summer, uh, you know, while my husband was working. And I was still just kind of like, okay, God, like what's going on? Even though I knew like what he had told me. So I continued to apply for full-time jobs and didn't get anything, like heard back from no one. And um, I think the one full-time position that I applied for, I actually got. And that was with AmeriCorps. I would be serving. So it wasn't even a job. It was basically you would be providing your service in some type of community setting for a stipend. So it wasn't even like full-time pay. It was a stipend, right? Like stipend. Hello, stipend. Part-time stipend. Uh, And so... I got that position and the Lord was just really confirming what he said. Like I said, no full-time work for a reason. Uh, I need you to focus on learning how to be a wife. And he had really laid it on my heart because I had been away. So the ministry my husband and I do was in North Carolina, but I left for a year to go to grad school. Uh, And so when I left, you know, my husband kind of continued the operations here. So when I came back, it was, you know, really focusing on ministry and it was really focusing on the young girls that he was connecting me with as far as pouring into them and mentorship and discipleship. So I did that basically was I worked part time with the mayor core. And then the other part of my time was really ministry. Like we were really dedicated at that time, still are dedicated, uh, but I just had more time to really focus on ministry. So if I wasn't serving at the community center, then I was having meetings with young girls or whatever it was that I was doing at the time. And so I say all that to say, like I share that personal testimony because I had my own plan in my mind of what post-graduation was gonna look like or post-grad was gonna look like. And the Lord interrupted that plan. And I had to be careful um, because of course, like my family was asking like, where are you working? You know, you got this degree, especially my mom. I love my mom, but she was like, you got this degree. So, you know, you paid a lot of money for this degree. What are you gonna do with this degree? And I really had to go before the Lord and ask God, like help me, like God really helped me to stay focused on you and to be obedient to what you want me to do and not to live to my own expectations, my family's expectations, or even society's expectations. And the Lord helped me to do that. So yeah, I just trusted God, basically. And, uh, you know, people have their opinions. People ask questions all the time. Well, what are you doing? Well, what are you doing? And I was like, I'm working, you know? And they were like, what do you do? And I was like, I serve at a community center. I work with the youth programs. I help to oversee the youth programs and I help to coordinate uh, the youth programs. And I just kind of left it there. I didn't offer up any extra information, whether it was part-time, full-time, how much I was making. It, honestly, it wasn't anybody's business, really. It was between my husband and I. And I think sometimes like for our peace of mind, we just have to like hear what people say and respect what they, they have to say. Of course, I like respect what my family had to say, but I knew what the Lord had told me. And that's where my loyalty lies, priority over anything and anyone is what God told me. So I just continued to be obedient to the Lord and I watched the Lord provide for us um, based off of the income that we had and the life that we lived, it made no sense, you know, Um, and not that we were living like extravagant lives because we're not extravagant people, but looking at our income, honestly, it just didn't match to the life that we were able, that the Lord was blessing and gracing us to be able to live. And that's all in God that had nothing to do with an income. Um... And so like, that's also part of the testimony is that like, sometimes we can put so much emphasis on, you know, where I got my degree from and, you know, what kind of job that I have. But at the end of the day, the Lord had to really show me like, Samantha, Columbia University is not your provider. I am your provider, you know? And so the Lord removed what could have been an idol. So he removed, you know, a job. He removed people being able to say that we have what we have or we're blessed the way that we're blessed because of Columbia. No, Columbia had, Columbia was great, right? It was a great learning experience, but it was the Lord that provided for us. And the Lord will share his glory with no one. So 
I can't give credit to a job, this full-time job. I can't give credit to anything or anyone else. Like it was literally the Lord that provided for us and took care of us. If you're at a place where you're about to graduate and you're like, what am I going to do with my life? Like it sounds cliche, but really just trust God. Like really pray about it and give it to God and say, okay, God, just lead me and guide me. And despite what people think, despite what people have to say, God, lead me, guide me and give me the joy and peace in this season. And so whether that's to be still, you know, whether it's to work in a place that I didn't expect to work, right? I didn't expect to go back to Chick-fil-A for a little while after I graduated with my master's. Like what? I'm being honest. I didn't. That's probably my pride, <laughs> but I didn't. And so, you know, I just really had to trust God and where he had me and just kind of allowed him to lead me. And so, you know, trust God, like honestly, trust God. And even if the Lord opens a door or an opportunity for you to work somewhere that you didn't expect to work, um, allow it to be a humbling opportunity, but also really look at your jobs as something to help develop you and to cultivate you. It may not be where you want to be ideally, right? but it's stepping stones to get to where you want to get overall. So use those opportunities to be cultivated, to be developed, to meet people, to network, um, to really figure out what you like versus what you don't like. And, you know, just allow the Lord to use those opportunities, even if it's not what you thought it would be. It's okay, right? It's okay. I think that it's so easy to feel like, okay, I'm graduating. I have to have my life figured out. No, you don't. You're probably graduating 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. Like you're still young and you don't have to have your life figured out at 22, 23. I don't care what anyone says. I'm 25 now and I still don't have my life figured out, even with the master's and even with going back to school again right now, like I don't have my life figured out, but I just trust God and I trust him in the process. And I think trusting him in the process and then trying to find joy and peace in that process and just allowing the Lord to lead you. You don't have to have it all figured out. It's okay if you don't have a job upon graduation. I'm not saying, you know, sit around and be lazy and, you know, just, you know, do nothing, but even if the Lord says it's not time for you to work, it may not be time for you to work like in the world, right? But still like allow that time of rest to be time where you spend time with the Lord, where you're cultivated, where he begins to deal with you and prepare you in that season for where you're going. Like even if you're not working in the world or in, you know, in that sense, like there's still stuff to be done. So you know, use that time to work on yourself. Use that time to volunteer. Use that time to find some individuals, some young people to pour into and mentor and whatever else it is. Be a good steward over whatever season the Lord has you in. And yeah, let it be that. Like, don't don't stress it. It's okay. Like, don't stress it. And don't allow other people to stress you out. I'm sorry. Just don't, you know? And that's just the reality. Like, I had to realize that like I love my family and they want what's best for me. So it comes from a very good place, but I can't allow my family to stress me out. I, j I just can't. So yeah, I hope that encourages someone. Uh, if you have any questions or yeah, just any questions, feel free to reach out. You can um, email me at a better me questions at gmail.com. So that's a better me questions at gmail.com. If you have any questions. So yeah. Uh, that's it.